middle of it, top price for our beef, beautiful San Francisco weather. What more could we ask? Well, a few days out of the saddle. <laughs> By golly, we'll have that too. Listen, as a change from Hop Sink's chuck wagon, I'm throwing a little supper party tonight. Oysters, steak, champagne, the works. <laughs> and after that, after that, five days for all of us in San Francisco with nothing to do but have a good time. Hot hey, to go. Oh, that's what I've been waiting to hear you say. What's the matter, Johnny? Mr. Cartwright, I think you made a mistake here. How's I that? got too much pay. No, no, you haven't. You and Ham both deserve a bonus. Now, you're going to have a good time, but remember, this is not the Ponderosa in San Francisco, so be careful. <laughs> Thanks, boss, but don't worry about us. Well, after riding trail with these boys of yours, this town is going to seem downright tame. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Come on, Ham. Don't be late for supper. Fine, boys. Now, with hands like Johnny and Ham, we won't have any trouble running the Ponderosa. Go on, let's get back to the hotel. Says some fun. I'm beginning to like this San Francisco town. You know something? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna buy that sweet wife of mine a whole bowl of Chinese silk. Silk? You say silk? I said silk. Nothing too good for that sweet wife of mine. Gentlemen, I just happened to overhear. Now, as you see by my card, I'm a silk merchant, and I just happened to have a brand new shipment from the Orient. It's the home of the silkworm. Now, if you'll follow me to my establishment. Why, sure, neighbor. Yes, gentlemen, right back here. I have my shop because it's a uh, wholesale. <laughs> right this way, gentlemen. I hope Shanghai Pete takes them off my hands. That ship sails for Hong Kong at midnight. Take them in, boys. That's very strange. Johnny and Ham should be here by now. Don't you worry about them too, Paul. They'll be here. They ain't gonna turn down free oysters and champagne, I'll guarantee you. Uh, he's right, Bob. Hey, I feel kind of giddy. Oh? Why? Had ourselves a big time. Had himself working himself to death. Uh, yeah, don't go if I do too, Paul. Really? Well, it's too bad you boys didn't think about that before you read those straws you drew to see who'd come on this trip. Hey, Paul. What about Hop Sings? He gonna come home? Oh, I doubt that very much. He's got a hundred relatives in town he wants to visit. We should have him back. After supper, me and little Joseph have figured we'd be in places where they got them good-looking waiter gals. Hey, <laughs> talking, brother. Hey, <laughs> talking, brother. If you think I'm gonna let you and little Joe wander around the Barbary Coast at night alone, you've got yourself another thing coming. This is San Francisco. It's a big city, and it's a wild city. Yeah, but boy, you're not Hamp and Johnny, Joe. Well, you're not Hamp and Johnny. Haven't you ever heard of Shanghai? That's yeah, got something to do with sailors, isn't it? You know there isn't a ship in this harbor that isn't short of sailors. You could be slugged over the head and on your way to Singapore before you ever knew what happened. That's a different thing to me. Oh. No, there's a lot of good-looking women in Singapore. In Singapore, but not on board a ship. And how'd you like to eat nothing more than sour salt pork for more than a year? Uh, I don't like that. No, I guess not. Well, you boys take care of yourselves. This is San Francisco. It isn't the Ponderosa. There's him, Johnny. Now. About time. I'm saying, I thought you were with your relatives. Something wrong, I'm saying? Not know for sure. The number three cousin, DC two cowboy going daddy. Heat on head, not come up. Cousin, come quick, tell Hobson. Think maybe it's Mr. Hemp and Mr. Johnny. Hemp and Johnny? Wait a minute. What makes you think it might be Hemp and Johnny? They not in hotel room? Well, maybe there's some kind of check on I think we'll all check it. Probably just over in some saloon having themselves a good time. Four midnight if you want to get paid. 
can I do to make them look more like sailors? Oh, hot. Any luck? Not a bit. Any luck? Nothing. Well, I'm going to the police. Hey, listen, you might of course have a look around some... Well, I guess it doesn't take four of us to talk to a policeman for just a moment. Remember, this is not the fun Stay out of trouble, do you understand? Why, you know us better than that. Police Department. It's exactly that. Well, I just told you, two of my top hands have disappeared and I've come here for help. And I suppose you expect me to drop everything and go find them? Well, yes, that's exactly it. Mr. Cartwright, men are always disappearing in this city. You do nothing to try to find out what happened to them? Do you realize how many policemen it would take to keep an eye on every Shanghai hideout on the Barbary Coast? Well, Sergeant, I'm not interested in how many men it would take. I can't give a help. Mr. Cartwright, this is a seaport. Ships coming in from all over the world. Ships need sailors. Oh, sailors, yes, but not cowboys. You'd be surprised how many cowboys become sailors. Now, I suggest that you do as all the ship captains do when they find themselves shorthanded. Say, so find yourself a new crew. Do you sit here and condone the fucking standing of you? I don't condone it, but I don't have enough men to do anything about it, so I accept it as an unfortunate fact. Now, please, if you'll excuse me. All right, Sergeant. You mark my words. I'm going to find those two men of mine, with or without your help. All right, go right ahead. But I'll find you. Look out. We're pretty close to the water, ain't we? much information, do That's uh, because they're all in Come on. And I'm at any of this. Boss, why don't you come that side of the street? I'll take this side. I'm saying go check with your cousins, see if they see me. And I think it will you boys be here on the coast. You're the better. Now, I've heard tell them that they have a lot of fun down here in the Barbary Coast. Well, you know what? I'm the same thing.
Mr. Cartwright? Yes, Mr. Cartwright. Where's Hassan and Joe? They go Barbary Coast. What? And that good. On Barbary Coast, hit, slice, cut, push. Very dangerous. The Shanghai. Well, Joe didn't have enough sense to know that harsh. What did you tell him? I tell him. He said he looked like fun. Looked like fun. But find those two before they get into some real trouble. Barbary Coast. I'm going go find Chris. Chairman of the whole Barbary Coast. Come on, Mr. Buster, wake up. Hey, man, you did this for money? I told you it's going to be fun down on this Barbary Coast. Look at that. A hundred dollars. Makes me mad in the mischief to think about how much talent I done wasted for free. Come on, Mr. Buster, wake up. Mr. Buster, like I told you, I don't want your championship. One man said, all the help. to meet my pa, Buster. young man. You too.
Now, there's a surprise. What's the matter? Something wrong? Wrong? Why, sir, this is the finest brandy squash I've ever tasted in my life. And I've tasted them all the way from New York to Chicago to New Orleans. Well, I'm glad you like it. It's an art. Art. It's an art. Not many men have the talent for it. You can work in New Orleans. No, oh, can't say as I have. I, a man with your talent could demand any did you guess? Yes, sir. And you meet a mighty lot of interesting people. <laughs> All kinds. I thought about it. I wish uh, that it looks like this. Practically everybody in town drops in here one time. Well, we get our share. I have two friends in town. I just got them in here and show them what a good drink really tastes like. Say, I wonder if they've been in here for it. Well, I... Got a pretty good memory for faces. A couple of cowboys, they work up a ranch in the Sierras. Drove a herd of cattle in town. What's, what's the story now? I want to get this straight. You said that there were two of them. That's right. Those two are inseparable. Two of the best things they've ever had. I'm the proprietor of this establishment. I don't believe I've had the pleasure of uh, seeing it here before. No, no, I think not. My name's Ben Cott. I'm the bartender on the excellence of his drinks. Well, that's very kind of you. Uh, why don't we go down to the end of the bar? It'll be uh, quiet and more comfortable. saying or pull one in the next 15 minutes, I'm just about ready to go down there and tear this dang Barbary Coast apart board for board. Where's Paul? Not sure. What do you mean you're not sure? Where'd you live? Mr. Cotlight tell Hopsing wait. Hopsing wait a long time. Mr. Cotlight no come back. Hopsing wait. Come see you boy. You shouldn't have done that. Paul comes out of there and you ain't there. What's he going to do? Number five cousin, wait. Well, just don't think anything's wrong with Paul. He can take care of himself. Can we get out of this mess? There's nothing we can do. You raise a fuss, they come in and beat you over the head. I've got some fun. Sounds like that Mr. Pendleton.
promised me six of them in three. You've got to get me ten. I need those men. My ship sails at midnight. Mr. Pendleton. Excuse me. I want to make a deal with you. A deal, Mr. Carter? I don't know what you expect to get for us, but whatever it is, I'll pay you twice that amount if you let us out of here. Twice? Fair enough. Oh, no, you don't. A contract is a contract. You agreed to give me six men. So I did. An interesting offer, Mr. Cartwright, but uh, due to circumstances beyond my control. Three times the gold price. A contract is a contract if you want my business in the future. As you say, a contract is a contract. Good. The one who's talking, he isn't drunk. But perhaps he just holds his liquor well. You know my principles. No one in. The two sailors, yes. The sober one, no. Unless you get me four men within the hour, I'll take my business to cut rate Joe. Mr. Cartwright, I feel pretty low down about all this. Oh, John, it's it's my fault for not keeping us all together. All right, come on, let's go. Mr. Cartwright, we'll just be getting up here for nothing. Believe me, it's best. All right, come on. Look, boys, we'll, we'll, we'll get out of this somehow. My boys are bound to be looking for me now. No, 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 not that one. The captain turned him down cold. I'm getting worried. Me too. Get just about ready to tear this damn blade down before you come on, Joe. I brought you something to eat. Well, I'm not hungry. Will you better? Shanghai Pete, is that what that Mr. Pendleton calls himself? Well, you got it wrong end, too. Uh, Shanghai Pete sometimes calls himself Mr. Pendleton. Uh, Mr. Pendleton. What's all that thing I know? No knockout drops in it. You're really good at the teach. What? Oh, well, I mean, is, we don't get your kind in here often. Mostly drunk. Have you know that them other two, two of the finest men I've ever known, just because they happened to go out in a little celebration. It wasn't a little one. It was a real good one. I don't know why men have to act up so. It just gets them in trouble. I wish someday I'd find just one man who wasn't always one to get into trouble. Oh. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, don't go. But why not? Sit down. What's your name? Kathleen. Kathleen. Well, that's a, that's a right pretty name. I think so. Uh, your name is Ben Carter, I think. Kathleen. Tell me, what what's a nice girl like you doing in a place like this? Ain't that funny? So many men have asked me the same question. And I've given it a lot of thought. And I think the reason is I like the money. Well, it's certainly an, an honest sort. <laughs> I think so. Oh, why are you surprised? Well, I don't know. Sometimes, you know, you can't just trust everybody. Kathleen, I trust you. I'm sort of hoping you would. Kathleen, now tell me, if this uh, Shanghai Pete or, or uh, Mr. Pendleton or whatever his name is, if he tells me, do you get anything out of it? Not a penny. Well, wouldn't you like to? Oh, yes. I've been asking to be put on commission. Kathleen, 
If you help me out of here. Better see now. Well, I have the money. Well, I don't see how you could. Wait the minute they brought you in and picked your pocket first. I, I mean, I, I don't have it with me, but I own a ranch. I can get all the money I want without any trouble. If you help me get out of here and tell me where I can find the other two men, five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars. Five hundred. You wouldn't back up. Oh, I give you my word. The money's at my hotel. If you help me get out of here, you get the five hundred dollars. You know something, Mr. Cartwright. I was thinking about getting you out of here the minute I came in. You know that, Captain. and he worked on that. He said ship short-handed, no can sail. Ship now ready. Perhaps you think maybe Mr. Johnny, Mr. Hemp, no longer can't wait. He's a sailor man now. Perhaps you think maybe Mr. Ben, sailor man too. Mr. Hoss, you better make a little joke. Yeah, bloody, but what? Is this any way to get it? This is a respectable establishment, son. I'm the proprietor, Alexander Pendleton. Have I the pleasure of seeing you in here before? Don't make no difference whether you have or not. I will need some answers. Now, son, please try to calm yourself down. What is it you want? I want my paw. His name's Ben Cartwright and two of his ranch hands. Then why all the shouting? I talked to Mr. Cartwright just a short time ago. Told him where he could find his men. Mister, are you telling me the truth? Now, why would I have any reason to lie to you? Won't you please put that thing away? I have a reputation to maintain here. That's better. Don't you forget. I can draw it out again right quick. Laddie Buck, I'm only trying to help you. Do you want to hear about your father or not? I reckon I did get a little too excited. Dad, burn it, I've been plumb sick. Well, now, why don't you try to calm yourself down? Everything's all right. Why don't you come down here at the end of the bar? Relax. Have a drink. What do you have? Fine piece of merchandise.
Help me find my man. do you want for him? A hundred bucks. A hundred? I offered you five hundred. And then turn me into the police afterward. Oh, I know the likes of your kind. A hundred and fifty bucks. The price is going up. Oh, come now, quick buck. You know better than that. This is stolen merchandise. This is carriage trade, and you know it. Double crossing rights the lot of you. He won't be too easy to turn over. I'll have to buy him new clothes. The overhead has eaten me up, Katie. I'll make it half price, seventy-five dollars, and it's a deal. But only because I've got to get back to the store before I miss. Quick, Buck, you're a thief, and you know it. But I do need the merchandise. Don't sweet him, you little double crosser. You're so caught right to cut late. Because it was costing you money to keep him. All oh, that good food. And especially if you couldn't sell him quick. Now, don't do that. I wouldn't cheat you, sweetheart. Now, would I? I'm not so sure. Little Katie wouldn't hold out on Shanghai feet. Here you are. See? Twenty-five dollars. Is that all you got for him? Captain Shaw got it turned him down. And cut rate you was gonna be stuck with them. <laughs> You're not that little Katie now, are you? Lucky for you, you caught me in a good mood. Besides, I've got another car ride. And is he a beauty?
you know, brother, I think you're right. I've seen this man before. Turn it down. Not at this price, Captain. Only a hundred dollars. I'm letting him go to sacrifice because I'm after your future business. Besides, your ship sails at midnight. Cut rate, Joe. You know my principles. I'm a fair man and a temperance man. I'm not offering you a drink. I'm offering you a ship. I do not approve of the practice of shanghaiing. No, I do not I would not resort to it except I find myself so often short-handed. Now, what kind of an excuse is that? Sir, I have dedicated my life to stamping out the evils of drink. It is abominable. Any man who is so drunk that he doesn't know what's happening to him deserves to be shanghai This man is perfectly sober. I can't use him. Well, thank you, Captain. I can't say I agree with all your principles, but... Can you smell, Captain? The reek of demon rum is nauseating to me. This man is obviously drunk. I'll take him. just better happen to start remembering a few more things. Oh, now, Daddy, you wouldn't be hard of a little bit, would you? <laughs> That's such a beautiful arm. It'd be a shame to tear it off. <laughs> Stop talking. I don't know what you want to know. We want to know about a man named Ben Carter. Mr. Horst, this is number three. This is Mr. Ben. They take Mr. Ben away from the ship. They find him a few people. Okay. You follow me. Find it, Mr. Carter. Johnny hadn't wanted to buy some silk for his wife, he wouldn't be in this mess. Oh, we've been in worse messes. Back in the Ponderosa, we've always been able to get out of them. I know. My heart just ain't in it. My heart is in it. After what I've been through, the ship in 47 is beginning to look pretty small. Captain! Captain! I'm going to see you in the future. 
if you want to see me, you come to me. Don't send for me. It isn't done. Oh, it isn't, isn't it? Will you listen to me? Have you ever heard of mutiny? Mutiny? Why, you're worse than a pirate. You and your high principles and your temperance, I'll see to it that your license is revoked on every sea in the face of this earth. Just who do you think you are? I'm Ben Cartwright of the Ponderosa. The Ponderosa? The Ponderosa. I know her well, Captain. A four-masted schooner out of New Orleans. The Ponderosa is a ranch. A ranch. I always wanted a little chicken ranch. There's a place up in Santa Rosa. Now, I'm an American citizen. I rights on board of every ship. Take Mr. Ben on that ship. I have enough men in those mountains to sink every ship in this harbor. So I... That's our pause, boys. It's like a bingo call to get charged. Let's go. you to stay out of trouble. Well, it took you fellas long enough to find me. If she did get enough, you might want to send you back. If she didn't get enough, you wouldn't want to admit it, would you? Very funny. Come on. Uh, hi. Here are your clothes, Mr. Cartwright. How'd you get them? I have a little business left to finish with cutting. You know what that little weasel was doing? He's going back into business. Second hand clothes. He was trying to sell outfit. Mr. Johnny, have a surprise for you. Number seven cousin in silk business. Make a present. One for fine China silk for you. I still would like to have me a court and trade made out of that. I wouldn't do it, Ham. Still can get him out on a whole lot of trouble. At least we're all together again. Yes, and thanks to all of us for everything. Uh, and tomorrow, right? we're going to start another vacation. How about it? Oh, God, I 
just as soon as I went back to the Ponderosa. Well, you're the one who was yelling about getting a vacation. I know, I, I know, but a vacation is time for a change, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I think I got my change. <laughs> All right. Paul, if it's all the same to you, there's, there's a little devil wildcats on the Ponderosa. I think I'd rather thing on with than any more of these city folks. You don't want to go back to work? I didn't pull that way. You could let them, let them have a vacation. <laughs> well, all right, then. Tomorrow morning, bright and early, we'll head back to the Ponderosa. Housing have one more big supply. Number nine cousin is a cook in hotel dining room. Housing help fix special fun supper. Oyster champagne steak. You can only leave a hotel room. You go properly coast. Very dangerous. Hit, sell us to keep fish, Shanghai. Shut up. How much did that little gal get for you? You'll never know. <laughs>